sitting here editing or working on this video and this frame right here pretty much sums it up. I'm not sure what to call this video, so I've made a decision. We're going to make it about the phenomena in Portland that is known as Goodwill Bins. It's a Goodwill where basically it's a catch-all between the donations and the dumpster. They put everything in these giant carts and you literally just dig through it. Saturday is gonna be a good day to show you here because people go nuts. Like they line up, they're almost crawling over people. It's like Black Friday at a Walmart. And people just dig through stuff and they sell it all by the pound. Electronics are 69 cents a pound. And actually I'll have to look at the pricing when I get there, but if you buy more than 25 pounds of non-electronics items, then the price cuts in half and they have a whole bunch of random stuff. They are not a huge fan of filming there, so I'm gonna use my cell phone to be a little more low key. I mean, obviously this camera, it, this is the GoPro by the way, but I'm gonna try and find a mirror, but I don't have one. Um, it has a blinking light and I still have to kind of like hold it up, you know, and people can see it. So I'm gonna grab the Note 9. I'm just gonna hold it like this on my chest and we're gonna go check that out. And the rest of this video is basically about all the stuff that I purchased and going through and fixing stuff and just kind of screwing around. But I spent maybe 15 or $20 on everything you're gonna see in this video. <laughs> so it's pretty outstanding. We just got the battery swapped in the F3 here. I'm not sure, I'm probably gonna take the bounder over there just because I wanna get a good charge on those batteries before I go running around. But uh, yeah, let's go check it out. We seem to have a wheelchair lift here. This is one out of a friend's minibus that he bought recently. They're gonna be converting it into a motorhome. But he gave the lift to me. We uninstalled it yesterday out here in the pouring rain and put it on this piano dolly. Uh, only thing is, it's not quite in the fully upright position. There's a little latch down here that connects to the bottom plate. It's uh, right down there in that gap and it keeps the hydraulics from bleeding off and the thing opening up. Now, we put the strap around it, which is gonna help that, but when you use this strap to tie it to the cart, it sort of forces it down. So anyways, what I need to do is power up the hydraulics on this to essentially get this thing in the fully stowed position. Now, it does have this manual pump here, but for whatever reason, it is not working. And uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is use this jump box and just manually power up this motor for a split second and that should be all it takes to get this thing back into the fully upright position. Okay, this is a fairly straightforward procedure. procedure. Basically all we need to do is jump from ground to this side of the contactor and that's gonna fire up the hydraulics. The only trick is on these jump boxes, you do not wanna use this as a switch because that switch will burn out if you're switching that big of a load with it. So what we're gonna do is clamp our negative onto a solid metal part here. We're gonna turn our switch on and then I'm just gonna bump this thing and it's gonna spark and carry on and this thing's probably gonna move a little bit. So let's see what happens. And there we go. It is now locked into place and it will hold its position even if the hydraulics bleed off, even without the help of these straps, but I'm gonna tighten them up anyways, just to be safe. This is one of those uh, Rikon uh, S series lifts, which is a commercial one. I think it has a capacity of like 800 or 900 pounds or something like that, which would actually be great for the bounder. Um, when I get another vehicle, it's got the wired remote. And uh, I think that cover is somewhere. It might still be in the bus. I'll have to grab that. But these things are designed to stand upright. They're basically perfectly balanced. And just sitting here on the cart, it shouldn't go anywhere. This orange strap is just kind of for an extra precaution to uh, keep it from deploying. But like I said, that little latch that's under those two screws there is now engaged. So we should be good to go. And then this red one is essentially, essentially just holding this lift on the cart so you can push it around without it sliding around on the cart 
Gotta be careful tightening this though, cause it'll, it'll bend this, but it doesn't take too much pressure. And there is actually one bolt that's sticking down through here that's also kind of holding onto the cart. So um, yeah, I think we should be good to go. I've cleaned out a space right here. We're just gonna push this thing in here and uh, that's where it's gonna live until I need it. It's actually like a few days after I filmed the rest of this video, but while I was here, I couldn't resist. For a dollar sixty, I got this little um, video cable that plugs into uh, portable video equipment, and I also got this thing. It's one of these old school wind-up solar-powered radios. Now these things had a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem as they got older. There's sort of a dampener inside here that keeps it from spinning too fast and uh, that has broken. So you kind of have to regulate it with your hand. Just kind of squeeze the thing a little bit to keep it from turning too fast. Anyways, the... Um, so Goodwill Bins is a very interesting place. It may not be the safest place to go in a wheelchair. Uh, there's all kinds of people running around and crawling over each other and they're pushing carts everywhere. But uh, yeah. Anywho, I picked up a bunch of stuff, and uh, I'll show you what I got. I, the rest of this video is pretty much me just screwing around with the stuff I bought and trying to fix it. Oh yeah, and there's this radio thing. I was trying to charge it a little bit on the way back. Let's see if it works. Hey! We got music. That well, seems to work. I'm just going to have to take it apart and... Uh, and fix those bearings in there. It's not supposed to squeal like that. Yeah. Um, so Goodwill Bins got some stuff. Found a replacement, one of these. It's a VCR slash DVD recorder. Unfortunately, this one is DVD plus and the standard is DVD minus. I don't know if Plus is backwards compatible, because everything I have is DVD minus. So worst case scenario, I can take the DVD drive out of this one and put it in this one. Or even just use like a LightScribe Super Drive or something like that. Because they just use PC um, DVD burners in here. But I'm not about to switch everything over to DVD Plus, assuming this thing even works. But the nice thing about this one is it came with the remote control. So. We're gonna plug this thing in now and see if the VCR works. I specifically purchased a tape just for testing purposes because it would actually be a favor if this tape got destroyed. So let's get it hooked up. Right now though, however, I have to take this thing apart because a piece of metal fell down inside of it. Uh, come on, let go of that. There we go. 
I noticed, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Goodwill bins, they're pretty rough on things, but... So we've got our RCA cables here that were plugged into the back, and then there was this one that's missing the center part. And, uh, it was plugged in here in the back, and that center part got stuck in here, so I tried to pick it out with a, um, uh, a screwdriver, and it just pushed inside, so we can't have that piece of metal floating around in here. There we go. Oh, okay, so that shouldn't have come out. Here's our piece of metal. It looks like one of our pinch rollers fell out. Um, this thing might be damaged. Uh, now this thing did get dropped once by me and then also by going through Goodwill Production. The, uh, what does that go on? Oh boy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna plug this in. I can't, I can't quite tell where this is supposed to go. I'm gonna plug this thing in with the lid removed and see if we can figure out what's going on. I, uh, I had to, uh, stop abruptly and this thing fell off the back seat in the van. Which, I know isn't necessarily good for anything. But, uh, yeah, let's see here. Oh, the fan turned on. Yeah, as you can see, this is just a Phillips DB rider in here, so I can swap that out. Well, let's, uh, throw this tape in. Let's see if we can destroy the old Blair Witch here. I know without this pinch roller in there, um, it's probably not gonna be... uh, working properly. I'll just have to be quick with it. Ah, figured it out. Eject! Okay, it's supposed to go right here. Somehow. I think there's supposed to be a retaining clip on there. I'm sure this thing falling off the back seat didn't help at all. Um, but it looks like our DVD drive opens and closes, so that's a bonus. Okay, well let's plug it into the TV and see what happens. I was shaking the thing around and I found this little part here. So, what this does is our pinch roller goes on here, and then this little part is a little cap holds it in place. Boom. There we go. And, uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. There we go. Now it's working. Seems to be playing. Stop. Fast forward. There's apparently lots of previews on VHS tapes. We're five minutes in and it's still playing previews. Let me break in here for a second and explain. So DVD plus versus DVD minus. As it turns out, uh, blank DVDs have a couple different formats. They're still kind of the same, but DVD minus is everything that I have. And DVD plus, while does have some slight advantages, those blank discs are way more expensive and I don't have any of them. So I'd prefer to stick to DVD minus. Yeah, VHS tapes, I've been going through and kind of recording some stuff and I kind of got a little bit obsessed with this project. I was wanting to get one of these dual deck machines to work. The one that has the VCR and the DVD burner built into one unit. I do already have a solution that's functioning. It's a separate DVD burner and a VCR. You just plug the two together and then you have to hit buttons on both at the same time. So I kind of went a little bit nuts trying to get this going and uh, this is what I was talking about. I have a brand new old external DVD burner. And this is a uh, super drive that writes in any format. Anyways, continuing. All right, let's take a peek inside here and see what we got. Hopefully something super exciting. Like how the plastic hasn't even peeled off because it's brand new and I'm already harvesting it for parts. Oh. There we go. Ah, it's IDE. Excellent. You can see there you've got the long cable and the super weird little power board. Okay, sweet. Um, let's grab the VCR and uh, we'll get this thing installed. Hopefully I didn't just break it. Now, in theory, whatever driver circuitry is running this thing, especially since it's IDE, we should be able to stick another brand of drive in here. It should work just fine. 
At least, that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, now our drive should come out. Here we go. Okay, um, let's go ahead and see if we can check up our new drive in here. Yeah, this one's physically a little bit smaller too, at least the length. The width is identical and all the screw holes line up on these things. But we'll have a little bit more space in here. So let's put this in here and see if it will recognize it. It says reading. Opening. Tray open. I wonder what that means. Well, um, interesting. <laughs> I wound up packaging this thing back up and putting it in the box. It did not work. As it turns out, DVD Plus doesn't require finalization of the discs, which means the machine doesn't even know how to do that. So even if you stick a compatible drive in there, it's still not going to work because the machine is completely missing all the lines of code that it needs for the finalization to occur. Anyways, I've already got something that works. I just decided to move on and, and leave it be. I'm, I'm getting, I was just getting way, I, I get fixated on things sometimes and I just want to make it work no matter what happens. And then, uh, yeah, well, you've seen my videos, you know how that works. Okay, a little break from the VCR stuff. I actually don't even know if I'm gonna be including that in this video, but anyways. Ever seen these things? They're uh, 3D printing doodling pins. The uh, Goodwill bin store had two of these things and a whole bunch of the filament sticks that go with them. These things essentially just uh, melt the filament, get a whole bunch of it, and uh, here we go, this stuff into sort of a spider web looking sort of material and you can just like draw in space or whatever. Oh wow, there's a lot of filament. I didn't realize it came with that much. But the nice thing about the, uh, the Goodwill bin store is everything is sold by weight and electronics are uh, 69 cents a pound. So <clears throat> a couple pounds of these and uh, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> a couple pounds of these and uh, there's all kinds of weird stuff. Whoa, nozzles. Anyways, it was like three bucks for all this. And uh, I'd always wanted to try these things out. I'd seen them for sale. Here we go. This is what they look like. Basically the filament goes on the top here and it has a little heating element and a motor and you push the buttons to advance or retract them. Anyways, these things are normally like, you can find them on sale for maybe 60 bucks or something kind of expensive. More than I felt uh, like was reasonable. Um, I'm gonna get these things set up. Looks like we got manuals. We've got power adapters, cleaning rods, like all kinds of stuff. So I'm gonna get these things fired up, figure out what exactly is going on and how they work, and then uh, we'll try and make something out of all of this. Out of all of this rainbow filament. These things make a lot of weird noises. I just changed the, uh, the color from black to yellow. I think the black one was jammed a little bit. So the color should change here. Yeah, it's slowly turning yellow. I'm just using this coffee box here for no apparent reason as a surface. It was the closest thing nearby. Ah, stuck on there. Okay. Okay, let's try and make something. It came with instructions in a few different languages. Anyways, so far, I've just been screwing around making stuff like this. Um, anyways, I'm gonna look up online and see what kind of cool projects or ideas you can get 
for uh, using these things because uh, I don't know it's neat and all but there's got to be a reason they exist beyond just um, making weird little things <laughs> uh, this is very much arts and crafts so I got two of these things going one's black one's green and I just made these little three things here and I'm going to now attach them together into some sort of weird little tree Okay, now that's actually pretty funny. When I was doing this little joint here, it very much reminds me of stick welding. Um, uh, that's funny. Um, hmm. Guess I need a little base for this or something now. Like I said, this is arts and crafts. I'll call this PT therapy, maybe. Um, let's see if we can make this thing stand up on its own now. Well, so these things, definitely arts and crafts related. I can't think of an actual like legitimate use for them as far as like prototyping or something would go. They work with uh, ABS and PLA, it came with a whole bunch of them. But I ended up with this weird tree thing and then with the ABS I put in some hot pink and yellow stuff, and then this thing, so. Oh, and <laughs> the letter B. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna box these things back up. I'm not sure what to do with them at this point, but uh, that was good for a couple hours of uh, physical therapy. My hands are tired. <laughs> Apparently, we have some uh, packages or at least one package. It's, uh, according to the shipping weight, 25.2 pounds. Now, I know who this is from. I have absolutely no idea what it is, so. Just, yeah, that's a lot of box. Let's uh, see what we got here. You're supposed to cut towards yourself, right? Okay. Are you serious? So... Uh, this is funny. I was not expecting this. So, here I'll just show you. It's um... A freaking ice maker. A thought went through my head when I moved in here, and uh, not that I want to take advantage of, you know, so many eyeballs on YouTube or whatever, but briefly, I was thinking, I should do a fundraiser for one of these, and I was like, nah, I should save that for something more useful. Um, dude, seriously, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was just fighting with that. Let me see here. So I got this thing and I slid it off the counter into my lap and then I slid it into the back seat on the van, then back into my lap here. So I'm not sure. Well, we'll just, I think we'll just do one of these. Okay, there we go, it's on the ground now. Seriously, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna see product details. I wanna see how much you spent on this thing. Um. I know I keep saying thank you, but like, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna get this thing set up right so the uh, the Freon in it gets all back to how it's supposed to be because I know when they're sitting on their side and stuff, they don't like that, but <laughs> we have freaking ice. <laughs> all right, um, a couple other things I wanna work on today. So let me see if I can get this thing unpacked while it's on the floor and get it set up. You ever the feeling that you're working on too many projects? Um, that was a weird noise.
Okay, enough of that. Okay, uh, so this little power supply thing, we're gonna work on that later. Because I'm so addicted to Goodwill bins, I keep finding things there for ridiculously cheap or essentially free. Yes, I got a clock. Um, so this one needs a little bit of work, mostly because this part's not attached. This one has the chimes down inside of it, and it runs off of, looks like a D cell, but it's got these little hammers that will uh, make the chimes work. Uh, I don't know how broken this thing is. It looks like it's been taken apart or it's fallen apart or something, I don't know exactly, but let me, uh, oh, there's some dust down in there. Let me, uh, let me grab a battery and let's test this thing out. I'm not quite sure why you tear one of these clocks apart if it doesn't not work and then give it to Goodwill. So let's see here. Appears as though the mechanism in there is working. Oh, it has a second hand. Let's uh, fast forward here a little bit and uh, see if we can make it chime. Looks like the hammers move. Well, maybe it's not as broken as I thought. They just have some screws missing that hold the thing inside the chassis. So let's see. Oh, it is like a plastic hinge on the back. <laughs> let's see if we can uh, get this in here and get it lined up. I might need to bend these little things so that they line up with the uh, chimes inside here. They are definitely out of alignment. Check it out. You can see if you look down in there, the hammers are not exactly in line with the with the chimes. That's easy. We can just bend those back into place. Right now, though, I need to. Oh, right now, though, I need to get the screws that hold this thing in. Right here, here, and down here. Luckily, when I was at storage earlier today, I grabbed one of my bolt kits. These are probably all gonna be a little bit too big. Yes, what I need are screws. Well, change of plans. The little wooden strut that's inside here that holds everything is completely broken. So, I think you know what the solution to this is. That's right, hot glue. We're gonna take the little, we're gonna take the little plastic back door off of this thing just so I have easier access to get the uh, glue down in there. And I'm pretty sure this thing was dropped, and that's probably why it was there. You can see there's dents in the top here, but the uh, the hole inside of this thing, you can you can see here how that wood's disconnected. There's supposed to be washers that interface with those screw holes, and uh, yeah, that's all a bit broken. While we're waiting for the glue gun to heat up, there's only uh, one thing that would make sense to do, and that would be uh, try to get some uh, two-inch sheetrock deckers out of the candy crane. <laughs> Don't ask. It even has little fake coins. Yay, I win.
I think this might actually be one legitimate application for uh, high strength slow melting hot glue and that's putting wooden casement back together inside of a random clock. <laughs> uh, hang on, I need more glue sticks. Pulled some pressure down on this. I don't think we need to take this thing back out of here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it in, like, hardcore. As long as you don't accidentally hot glue the battery in there, I think we'll be good. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever found an application for this kind of gratuitous use of hot glue before. <laughs> I'm probably gonna go through a couple of these sticks. Actually, I'm using enough that I have to let the gun heat up again because it's uh, cooled it down. So you've already used most of that one. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a thing of beauty. I think we're pretty much good to go. Let me uh, advance the time here and make sure our mechanism's still working. Yeah, it looks like we're still good. Cool. Now all I have to do is readjust the little hammers so they're actually doing something. Seems to work. That might get annoying though. Luckily it does have a, a button here you can push to uh, turn off the chimes. I'm not sure how loud that is outside my unit, but um, there's that I guess. Let's put it back together. Uh, there we go. All the hot glue is piled in there. Our little hammers have been adjusted so they actually work. I guess uh, putting the back cover, I guess putting the back cover on it will help muffle the sound a little bit because it's like really loud right now. Oh yeah, and I guess got this little hole up here on the top. Eh, whatever. I think what I might do is grab some electrical tape and put it on the chimes in here. I think that should help muffle them a little bit. Okay, I'll just take a piece of this and sort of wrap it around these things. Maybe I'll just stick it on there lengthwise. One piece of electrical tape installed. I can work with that. It's a lot quieter. There you go. I have one of these things now. Uh, this thing uh, surprised me. I couldn't figure out what the noise was. It's like dishes clanging or rattling around or something. I was like, wait a minute, what's that noise? <laughs> well, we've got some uh, fairly new Group 34 batteries here, albeit fairly dusty. And they are going to be going into the old F3 here. But seeing as how it's approximately after midnight. We will do that tomorrow.